Core to the cloud. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the podcast, What's the Odds with Steve Ren is easy. Coming in hot from Buffalo. Yes, you see over my shoulder. That is a box of just eaten wings. Actually, not just eaten. That was from last night. I got another plate. That was I went to the Anchor Bar last night. Got to check out the wings there. They're good, but everyone says there's better places. Today, I went to Gabriel's Gate, which I've eaten there before. Crushed the fucking 10-pack of wings there. So, overall, I've been here for about 29 to 30 hours, and I've had about that many wings, about 30 wings. So, I'm doing about a wing an hour. Yeah, is and it that's just the bad. angle that you're holding the camera at, or did your neck disappear? What are you talking about? My fat? The fat? I'm You've right eaten here, so many wings. <laughs> I have a neck still. I, I didn't bring my equipment. People complain all the time about how everything sounds. So I'm not lugging that shit around. All it does is get me stopped at TSA pre. And, you know, I got fucking, I don't want them going through my bag. I don't, I just, I, you know, like I, I bring a vape pen and I don't want anyone, you know, I'm not going to spend, I'm not Brittany Griner. I'm not spending a couple of days in jail in a Russian prison because of a vape thing so i'm not trying to send up any red flags I'm, i didn't bring my big ball powder which set up a flag in uh in where was i in west palm two weeks ago they stopped me for my ball powder my gold bond powder so now i don't bring that anymore and then i don't bring the fucking equipment i used to bring the zoom and the whole thing but then people were like it sounds like shit your mic's fucked up so you know what this is what it is it's fucking free for god's sake yeah it's a fucking free podcast. We don't do any ads. We bullshit for a little bit, and then we get the fuck out of here. We leave you alone. Please. Please, for the love of God, we're the sloppiest pod in the world. We don't want um, any trouble. We don't want any trouble. We, we're doing this because, I mean, look, if it was up to me, I'd never see these guys in the offseason of football. Just kidding. I love the both of you. But, mm -hmm. um, but every this is the greatest day, single offseason in the history of the NFL. And the draft has I mean, I can't happened. argue with you. I'd love to argue with you about that, but I can't. That's an inarguable point. I mean, I don't remember any other movement like this. And you know what the funny thing is? It's like the one guy everyone thought was going to move started this whole thing by staying. Yeah. You know, everyone thought Aaron Rodgers was going to be the guy that was definitely on the fucking move. He's done with the Packers. And then he's the guy that's, you know, everyone was waiting for him to move, and then we're all going to make our moves after that. And then they was like, oh, I'm staying. And then everyone moved. Everyone else. It's insane. Um, as I mean, two days ago, and I wanted to get your guys, because I'm in Buffalo and I did radio this week. So I did the sports show here. I can't remember who it was. Fucking Big Al and some guy. I don't know. It was good, though. Hmm. Um, and so we, uh, you know, I, I, I told them about you guys and your passion for the Bills. And so I said, you know, I think that they think it's a good move because it's out of – a team that there was their biggest rival, but you know, now you put them in the division. What I'm talking of course about is Tariq Hill being traded from Kansas city to the dolphins for, I don't know how many picks, four picks. Uh, four or five. I, believe, yeah. I believe it was five picks, one first five picks. and then some, yeah, some fourths and some fifths, probably a first and the second in this there. year. Yeah. And I think like a second and a third or a third and a fourth next year. And I, they gave him four years, 120 million. Uh, which makes him the highest paid receiver of all time, obviously, and now, presently now. But, um, and I think it's all guaranteed, am I right? Or 90% of it's, a lot of it's guaranteed. I'm, I think everything but the last year, I think, might be guaranteed. So it's great. Congratulations. Uh, I don't know what, I mean, I, do you think Kansas City, uh, w when they got Schuster, started cold calling and putting feelers out for Hill? Or do you think it was a thing where they just got a, an incoming phone call and they made him an offer that they couldn't refuse? I think it's the latter, but I also think because Mahomes' contract was so much, they were looking to move Hill because he wanted to get paid. At the end of the day, he's, he wanted money. And what this does with the Devontae Adams, he saw Devontae Adams get paid. He's like, I deserve to be paid that. What it does now is... Uh, apparently Stefan Diggs, there's rumors about a trade. I don't think they're true, but there's rumors about him wanting his contract. You've got DK Metcalf. That's going to want to get paid. You got AJ Brown. You got these guys that are ending the rookie contracts in a year or two. And now like 
the, the floodgates are open. You got to pay them. Cooper Cup is making 18 million a year. And that's like the biggest steal in football right now. Yeah. Um, I do. Are you worried about Stefan Diggs? Like, Putting up a, a little a, a worried, yeah. I'm a little worried. You don't want you don't no. want camp pulled out. You don't want any. He's of that going shit. to That's figure it out. He's still two more years on the contract, but we're going to have to probably figure something out after this season if he's going to stay around. I mean, Are you happier? Oh, go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say they'll they'll probably sign an extension for him. But he's going to get paid. Those. They're He'll going to paid. have to pay him because that's the market now. Tyree Kill well, and Devontae could- Adams have shifted the market. And they can franchise – or they can franchise him, right? When his contract runs out, yeah. When his contract runs but out. But he, I mean, he signed, he signed an extension people. when he was traded to the Bills, correct? He was traded to the Bills, yeah. But that was, what, two years ago? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Got two years you... left, but he's going to want money. He tweeted right after the uh, Tyreek Hill trade, what is happening? And Are and you happier? He deleted that... all of his Instagram posts, too, for what that's worth. Dude, Literally everything off his feet. I know they do that, but it's so <laughs> cryptic and it makes fans super paranoid. So he deleted everything. And then... when you, if you listen to sports talk radio, the guys that call in, they don't give a shit. You know why? Because they're not on Twitter. They're, they're just bitching at the TV and the radio. They're not <laughs> fucking talking to – they don't understand. They're not following these guys on Twitter. It's only you cunts that know Twitter. And they're like, you know, the, the shady moves that – these guys make you know the the messages they try to send via the internet that never work none of this shit works no, no one's you know like it's 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 only ever gotten like bad for the person trying to do it it really is i don't think it's ever it's i mean the original one was like to doing ch- sit-ups in his fucking driveway you yeah. know and drew Rowan, rosenhouse shouting over that was the original like now i'm i'm shadow banning my team from my instagram page that's the new fucking to doing push-ups so it's like i i i I, it's never worked it's never played out like where it's like wow that was this great smart tactical move on that guy's part it just always looked like like it was stupid you know that's what i love about the tyree kill thing too as you see when he signs the contract it's a picture of him and the rosenhaus brothers it's like this fucking rosenhaus guy is in everything. And of course he's happy he signs with Miami. He's always had a of relationship course. with Miami. But as far as apparently the KC offered him a contract that would have made him the highest paid receiver. I think the second he turned that down, they're like, okay, we'll listen to offers. I don't think Miami yeah. gave up a lot, honestly. Not as much as KC probably could have gotten. It's they not had quite the a, picks, they had the picks to give up because they had gotten some right, right. But, they, but they, yeah. they, they should have yeah. gotten a better than a late first. Oh, it's fucking like 28-29 for Tyreek Hill. Well, well, they basically gave up less than what Vegas gave up, right, for for Devonta Adams. Because Devonta Adams was a, was a first-round pick, right? And, right, am I right about that? I think it was a first round mm-hmm. and two second rounds or something like that. Something like it was pretty comparable okay. to what it was. I thought it was a first um, and a second. My, if it's two seconds, then fuck. I mean, Adams – definitely netted more than than hill did as a bills fan while you're looking it up are you more nervous about having to play them twice and having to like having the dolphins essentially get better rather than having the the uh chiefs staying packed and stacked you know what i'm saying yeah you know, maybe having them be a little less of a team a less of a fucking a problem later on, but rather than, you know, you got to face now the Dolphins twice, at least in the division. And then, you know, you got to, they're a division rival. So no one's um, worried about the Dolphins, Steve. Okay. Yeah, until we see them on the field, it's nothing to worry about because the Bills have also gotten better this offseason. They've made some very good moves to shore up some positions. And I think in the draft, you'll see them take a cornerback and get some depth and maybe get another receiver for depth. So if they're able to do that in the first two rounds, team's pretty complete as it is. So, yeah, let's weaken the Chiefs as they go into the toughest division next season and see how it plays out. I would rather take on Tyreek Hill and the Dolphins receiving a pass from Tua than from Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. You know, um, you know, like, Tua's still not a, not a, you know, a proven commodity. He has looked good yeah. at times. He, had, had, he did have a couple great games last year in that eight-run, eight-game stretch they had. But for the most part, he is not someone that I think that, you know – 
you are more excited about Jalen Waddell and Tariq Hill and, and, uh, and, you know, the defense than you are really. I think two is probably the fourth. Yeah. Fourth and or they've, fifth person. they've greatly improved their offensive line. So, I mean, this yeah. is it for Miami. If the guy doesn't have it this year, then you got to stop apologizing for him and just accept the fact that it was a blown pick. And I mean, but think about it. If you don't, I mean, they've given up a lot, but, they don't. They won't have a first round pick to draft a quarterback next year, and next year's class is pretty good. Um, so they'll have to go out and find somebody else, you know, a la fucking Indianapolis. Who so we'll get to that. Matt Ryan going there. So it's not like after this year, there's no. I, I don't think there's a position, that, especially quarterback, that you can't fix within a year. I mean, the Giants didn't do anything besides bringing, uh, you know, <laughs> you took literally backup. all of our backups. I mean, it, by the way. That's it. We got another guy this week. Every time I see the Giants sign someone, it is a former Bill. It's the, yeah, you took our I, practice squad punter. So good I, luck I, with I, that. And I honestly don't mind the sense because I'm like, there's no team that – there's no two guys that know that team better. So they know the quality guys on the team. But it is a little – I feel like it's, you know, like the Yankees with the Oakland A's. It yeah. was like, who's great on the A's? And then they're like the minor league team for the Yankees. Well, I it's like, like the Bills uh, are McDermott and Bean. How many former Carolina Panther defensive linemen did we take chances on because they were familiar and none of them panned out? It's the yeah. same thing. I, I mean, I, I, I'm hoping they've signed a couple offensive linemen. They signed your, one, some guy, an offensive lineman from you guys uh, this week. They, they signed Glonowski from. Um, Indianapolis, which I like, I liked him. Um, I, I hopefully he stays healthy and can play well. But you know, it, it's a lot of the the. I think Todd McShay and what's his name both have the Giants getting Evan Neal, offensive tackle, which would be fucking huge. I think that yeah. would be a great if for some reason he slipped down to what is it? We have five or six. One of those is our first pick. If he slipped down to that point, I'd be fucking great. So shore that up. And then let's create our own problem. Let's let's then go now, Daniel Jones, prove yourself, or we're going to bring in the fucking the Tyrod. And I don't mind Tyrod Taylor for I a mean, year, dude. At the very least, just get some protection for Barkley. Open yeah. a hole for the guy. Try to get something going offensively. Something, something in the right fucking direction. God, this place is so depressing. <laughs> let, let, let me say this real quick about uh, before we switch off Tyree Kill. What it reminds me a lot of okay. is, oh, oh, is that yeah, rainy? It's shitty? beautiful Buffalo. Yeah, dude. I mean, it is nice, but it's like thirty-eight degrees and like slushing. Oh. Every time I come here. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, so go ahead, go ahead. Lucas, well, I interrupted you. Sorry. It, remi- it reminds me exactly of Wes Welker when we- when Wes Welker was playing for the Dolphins. He was a good player. And definitely a threat. It wasn't really until mm-hmm. he was traded to the Patriots that, you know, then he became like a stud. And it, it's kind of the reverse of that. Like Tyree Kill on the Dolphins will be good, but he's not going to be as good as he was on the Chiefs. Not the factor that he was. No. You and don't also, have- also got to think the type of player that he is. And I alluded to this before last season, and I said the same thing about Derrick Henry, the type of player he is with the volume, he's going to get hurt. Tyree Kill is a guy who runs quickly and stops and changes direction. He's going to pull a hamstring at some point. It's just inevitable. It happens to everybody. So Don't wish ill on I am man. not wishing ill on He doesn't on the have man. the greatest just, quarterback with the greatest arm and the ability to, to escape the pocket right now playing, throwing to him anymore. I mean, if you, if you give Tyree Kill – seven seconds to get open he's going to get open every single time he's yeah. faster than everyone else on your other team so um that will be the biggest difference he will not have the talent getting him the ball that he's used to having uh what level of ability to will bring he might be able to now have the the, the, the chance to throw the ball downfield as often as he wants because he might have more protection he's got more weapons to get down there so he might rise to the occasion but for right now, if, I, if I'm you guys, I'm saying I feel like the Chiefs got a little bit worse, and I'm not exactly sure that the Dolphins – they got better, but this Dolphins might not be got the thing better, that them but, over the edge. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and this is in not, the backfield, you're going to go with Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert. Like, 
again, not to wish injury on anybody, but Mostert's going to be hurt the second he touches the field. Oh, That's Jesus, man. Just what happens. <laughs> wow. Uh, also, I love the argument. I'm sure you've heard this, that the Raiders fucked the Chiefs by giving Adams that deal which in turn made Hill want his new deal. Yes, and that, absolutely. So good for the Raiders. And by the way, yeah, Devontae netted a first and a second, as pretty much did Hill, plus two fourths and a fifth. So I'd call it almost a wash. And a yeah. smaller but should not be forgotten move, uh, MVS just signed with the Chiefs. So they do get like a, a speedy guy. Martez, Martez Valdez Scant- Scantling. So Rodgers literally has no one to throw the ball to except Randall Cobb, who's <laughs> 51 years old, and a tight end coming off an ACL injury. What in the world is going to happen in Green they Bay? Have no one. <laughs> so DK I, I got to think the other day yeah, was they, out they there saying, make- I'm now the – the guy in seattle i'm gonna take care i'm the leader in seattle like he should be looking to get the fuck out of seattle he should be like get me over I, to I gotta Aaron think, Rodgers. yeah i gotta think green bay if they were gonna offer Devonte adams which they did a matching contract to las vegas they gotta have the money and go okay well let's just give a little less and go get dk i mean you gotta they think something that. they they have nothing they literally have nothing they have alan um, lazard they have Randall Cobb, how, and then who the hell are these other guys? Uh, how do you think uh, – I mean, I knew it was, had to come about. I mean, they basically just – they gave up on Matt Ryan in Atlanta. So – and, you know, it's 12 years. It's, it's, you know, it's time for teams to sometimes split in part ways. But um, what do you think about that move to Indianapolis? Do you think that that makes them better? I mean, is it a lateral move to Carson Wentz? I'm not saying – league. Le- I think um, ability wise, it's probably ladder. It's a, it's a, it's a lateral move. It's you know? a lateral move, but I think as far as uh, but leadership you know, general, and the ability, Matt yes, Ryan's lead- a step up. Yes. And he I has playoff people, experience, which and, technically Wentz does, but he, he was hurt for the playoffs. It was Foles that carried him through, but Matt yeah. Ryan has Super Bowl experience. Um. And I, you know, depending on that offensive line is still very good. As, as long as you have Quentin Nelson, you're going to be okay. So I, you know, I think that that makes them better. Um, so, yeah, I, I, the AFC, it's like consistently just, it's a water finding its level with each one of their teams, the moves that they make, you know, the Chiefs get a little bit worse, but did they get better depending on their picks? Indianapolis getting a little bit better with, you know, it's like, so, it's really going to be interesting to see. First of all, camp this year, camp's going to be wild because you, yeah. ba- you, I mean, almost every team has a tremendously new, integral piece to the puzzle coming in. You know, I would say Robert six, Woods to 70, the Titans. Yeah. You know, Russell Wilson, every team, Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, Deshaun Watson. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's crazy how many different people have been shuffled around. So this year, especially, I'm like, fuck, yeah, who's going to get hard knocks? I'm, I think it's going to be the Broncos. Let's see. Well, isn't it the – they pick one of the five bottom teams. Yeah. So it can't be the oh, wait, Broncos. Wait, I thought it was – I thought it was the, – the, I thought it was like you can't be a first-year head coach and you mm-hmm. didn't make the playoffs last year. I thought those were the only two criteria. I thought it was always the bottom five and they randomly pick one and it can't be a first-year coach. Who are the bottom five? The Giants, the Jets. Oh, they're going to do the Jets. Oh, they're going to do the Jets. I'm looking at. Oh, looking. my God. Robert <laughs> Yes. Sala. They're okay. going to do the Jets. So, so there's one of three teams that could be forced <laughs> into hard knocks this year. <laughs> okay. What? Okay. So what, here. All right. The so Jets it, have been done before. Yeah. It, it was the Rex been, Ryan been, year. Yeah, it's been a minute. So the three teams that could be forced to, to do – the doc the documentary series is are the lions the jets and the panthers well the lions i would actually the lions would be fun to see their coach is pretty outrageous and they have a kind of exciting young team the, the panthers, panthers too that'll be don't a have dumpster a quarterback. fire well who, who yeah. do the panthers get now they signed someone Darnold. didn't they <laughs> no no oh they didn't oh no I'm, they I'm, tried uh, to get to sean yeah you know, James is signed with um, – I mean, with, Baker Mayfield Saints, or Jimmy G are the only two cool. guys left, so they may go and get Baker or Jimmy. 
How, where the fuck is Jimmy Garoppolo going to go? They did not plan the market this well. They up. have yeah, they the have market dried up. They subway lost subway ads running all right leverage. Now. <laughs> but you know, maybe they still don't believe in Trey Lance, and they'll keep him around for another year. Uh, I think maybe they, pre- maybe they think Trey Lance isn't ready. The guy can't really throw the Dude. ball yet. They need to work no on his. He can run for sure. He can come in and be a gadget guy, but so can Taysom Hill. Yeah, but they've really kind of like everyone said goodbye to Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah. They had like a going away party for him. Yeah, they yeah, had. I just to, saw him in a subway lines. ad. They're trying to bring him. I back. know. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like they, he, it's not that he, the subway ad was supposed to be like, hey, you know, it's like it's he's already supposed to have signed with a new team, and it's like, oh shit, Jimmy Garoppolo's now the face of the Carolina Panthers and Subway. It's like, oh, yeah. I look at the commercials now. I'm like, this guy might not have a job. They're giving, they're yeah, giving they these sponsorships have to like Darnold Baker and Mayfield Cam and Jimmy Newton. Garoppolo. It's like, these dudes don't have fucking jobs, man. It, it's be- if, if your commercial is your fucking main job, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. If your main source of income is the prudential fucking or progressive fucking insurance, you're not a quarterback. Also, you're, fucking, you're flow. <laughs> also, you're, Colin Kaepernick worked out at University of Washington yesterday for the Seahawks. So apparently, five teams have called. Dude, <laughs> they, Colin Kaepernick. I mean, how long has it been since he's played? 2016. Yeah. It's like they're going to Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Colin Kaepernick. They're just going to wait till he just isn't good enough to play anymore. And then just show the film, yeah, like, dude, he's just not good enough. And people will have to agree because he's, you know, the video will, you won't, it won't lie. Like, it's, he's just probably he can't be good enough anymore. I mean, fucking Robert Griffin isn't in the league anymore. And didn't he come like five years after fucking Kaepernick? Yeah. So, and they were the same style of quarterback. So, I, I mean, I don't think. I mean, I can't imagine Kaepernick being good enough anymore to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. I just, I really, but then again, you know, Mitchell Trubisky's got his fucking third job. So what do I know? Um, but Trubisky's yeah, I just, solid, man. You're going to see it. He might You're be great. See it. He's got a good Pittsburgh, coach. He's got a good offense. You think they uh, draft a quarterback though? Do they draft Pickett or Willis? <laughs> It amazes me, by the way, that a Liberty player is projected to go in the first round. That's insane. Yeah. Could you see that throw? Yeah. That throw was, I mean, it's a, it's a different world. Like, I mean, we all fell in love with Homeboy for his one throw. Who was the guy last year? Oh, Zach Wilson who made this, like, insane throw, and everyone fell in love with him. But that throw was pretty nuts. I don't know. I couldn't tell how far back he was, but that was a cannon. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, his draft stock rocketed up after that nobody wants to miss out on the guy so everyone just tries to get him and that's why it all comes back to dave gettleman overreaching for daniel jones in the first round falling in love with him at the senior bowl and completely ruining the mannings the mannings were the ones who influenced him dude you leave the Mannings he's, out of he's, this, our, okay? he's our boy from our camp you'll love him he's going to be an all he's a hall of famer mm-hmm it was the Mannings. You, you can blame Gettleman. He made the final decision, but there was I blame definitely you. some heavy man. <laughs> I had nothing I to do you. with it. Or did I? You knew it. You knew it was happening. Love seeing you, like, you guys oh, well, This is going to be okay, but you knew you it was going to be rise while okay. you fall. Well, guess what's going to happen soon? We got all your fucking players, so you guys are going to go down soon, and we're going to end up beating But you have all of our practice squads, so we had to just focus on staying healthy this year, and we have one of the best trainers in the league, so – how do you know? A lot of, I just know. You just know. You know what you just know. know. I believe. Um, can anyone look up Will Zalatoris for me and see how he's doing? I'm not going to turn the TV on. How do you spell oh. that? Will Zalatoris? William Z A L Z A L A T O R I S. Let's see. He looks like Owen Wilson. Right now. Right now, I think he's playing. Who's he playing? Is he making any money? Dude, this is the last piece of the of the puzzle. What's he got to do? He has to win outright or he just has to finish? He just has to win today. He has to beat the guy he's playing. And as soon as Lucas tells me he's winning. Let's hope. 
Wait, so wait, it's Friday, so it's, it goes, the last day Sunday. So yeah, it, but today's like the last, like to, today they get down to the final 16. So tomorrow's 16 and 8, and then Sunday is final four play, and then the winners play. So you're going to play 30. If you want to win this thing, you're going to probably play 36 tomorrow and 36 on Sunday. You probably play, won't play all those holes because hopefully you win, you know, this, if you're up by four and there's three holes left, you've already won. So you right. don't play the last three. So, uh, yeah, but come on. Yeah, damn it. They don't make it easy to find. I'm on ESPN.com right now. And Let's go to scores. Oh, yeah, he's sorry, the guy man. that looks like the kid from Happy Gilmore, right? Yeah, it's, all right, there Williams we go. There we go. Okay. He's right. caddy. All he's right. Caddy. No, but he looks like the kid that plays Happy Gilmore's caddy in Happy Gilmore. Yeah, he does. He does a little bit. Uh, Will is one up through nine. All right, come on, halfway home, <laughs> halfway home, baby. I'll post the win later on on Instagram once I get all the check marks next to it. I like to see my DraftKings check marks come up first before I cash in my bet. Uh, it makes me feel good. Um, and I was so happy that I was, I'm like, oh shit, I'm still in New York. I can still gamble because this is a fun one. This is like, I did it on the final four last night. I did a trifle uh, uh, parlay. Only when I got wrong, I took the fucking Gonzaga. I figured Gonzaga would take care of Arkansas, but they lost. So I took Duke and I took um, who's the Villanova. Yes, Villanova, the Big East. Uh, I took them as well. So, but, you know, I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, are you guys watching this at all? The, the uh, NCA? I just started oh, yeah. really no, good. I, yeah. I, I, Iowa State plays tonight. Yeah, they're 12, right? They're a 12 seed. Yeah. Those fucking 12 seeds, dude. They really are like baby ones. Yeah. They're always a team that's really, really good that just didn't get any recognition during the year. Actually, um, they, were, they, they, were, they, were, they were they were they were 11th. I'm wrong. Uh, they play okay. Mi- Miami tonight at seven. Oh, that's uh, a huge difference. Yeah. Miami's got great defense, dude. <laughs> great defense, dude. I didn't, I didn't know um, they had a basketball team, honestly. Miami. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh, do they got everything? Only. It's Division no, One. Football only. Football only. And they're not even good in football anymore. They used to be great. Now they fuck. And I mean, look, I don't want to fight Jeremy Shockey or anyone like that, but Warren Sapp. But they know they're not good anymore. Yeah. Um, Michigan lost last night. Uh, it's nice to see Jalen Rose was there. Jawan Howard's obviously the coach. Brings me back to my memories of the Fab Five. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I watched the thing on. Do you watch um, Real Sports this week? No. What's it? They did a, they did a thing on Jalen Rose and his uh, the school that he runs in Detroit. It's pretty cool. Um, seems like a you know a good dude. Uh, what else am I doing? Oh, I watched. Um, what do we watch? Uh, oh my god, this movie on Netflix. It was called Fuck. Shit, called fuck. Jesse. Hold on. Did I, am I am I still recording? Oh, shit. No, it's yeah. with Jesse Plemons and Jason Siegel and Lily Collins. It's called Yeah, okay. the one about the tech millionaire about. breaks into their house. Yeah. I hear it's a mind fuck of a movie. Dude, it's not really. It's kind of I love Jesse Plemons. I love all those people and they all did the best they could. It just wasn't I, I you know. It's it's uh it's a movie that if you're a cool kid, that's the only way this thing's getting made. If you, if the three of us wrote this script, there's no way in hell this thing's ever getting made. This guy breaks into a house. Spoiler alert. He's really not that aggressive. Um, he holds these people hostage for money. But at any point, any one of them could run away. It's not like a thing where it's really kind of, it's thinly constructed. But, it, you know, it's an out. Here's what I loved about it hour and 24 minutes so you knew i knew halfway and i'm like this isn't great but here's what i know i know that i don't have a lot left so that's good news and that that's what i mean it wasn't like a thing where i'm like this was the worst thing i've ever seen in my life it was a waste of my time i would i wouldn't watch it again but it was an hour and 24 minutes and that is manageable in my life yeah that's very manageable so does it get Um, your nod for best picture at the oscars on sunday no Who's going to win Best Picture this Sunday, by the way? Uh, There's 10 of them. Yeah. There's 10 of them. 
We haven't seen any of them. Right. I saw Coda. You know what I sucks is I I watched Belfast? I watched uh, Belfast. I watched Coda on a plane. I was on a plane, and I was loving it. And then the entertainment went down, and I couldn't finish it. I got like forty minutes in, was completely hooked, thought it was great, and then just nothing. Uh, Spoiler Nightmare Alley was pretty learned, good. Spoiler: They all learn how to talk at the end. Everyone's speech <laughs> is perfect at the end. Uh, the so part. you have I get to. <laughs> Nightmare Alley, Don't Look Up, Dune, Drive My Car, Belfast, Licorice Pizza, The Power of the Dog, West Side Story, King Richard, and Coda. Uh, Belfast is gonna win. Mother, haven't, fucking haven't seen it. Belfast, Kenneth Branagh. Belfast, dude. If Don't Look Up wins, I'm. I'll, we're, we're, it's the last <laughs> podcast. We're not doing this anymore. We're not in the entertainment business. I don't even know what business we're in. Because that movie, dude, you could defend it all you want, Brenton. You know deep down inside that was a piece of shit. That was Airplane. <laughs> that was a... That was like, you know what, Airplane, why it's so funny because it didn't take itself so seriously. It was like slapstick comedy. Yeah, yeah they tried to take wanted. their airplane serious, but I still enjoyed and it. It was terrible. There were funny yeah. moments. It yeah. was oh fun. Oh, my there, God. Leo's yeah. acting was spot on as usual. It was just delightful. Again, it goes <laughs> And I enjoyed the music. It's the same problem I had with that fucking, I love Jesse Plemons. To me, Jesse Plemons is the new um, Philip Seymour Hoffman. He can do everything. He can do drama. He can do comedy. He's every choice he makes is interesting. I, I love watching him act because he is he is a riveting person to watch. But Jason Siegel's great too. Lily Collins, I don't watch that fucking um, the the Paris show, but I heard she's great too. She was very uh, serviceable in this. But everyone did their job. It was you cannot blame anyone except for the fact that this was just paced really slow. For an hour and 24 minutes, it, it fucking it felt longer. So uh, it's paced really slow. It's very indie, and it's very loosely tied together. It's got a it, – I'm sorry, dude. You point a gun at my wife, as soon as you turn away, I'm going to bash your fucking head in. We're not going to sit down and have a philosophical talk about life <laughs> by a fire. I'm going to fucking wait till you're done, and I'm going to light your body on fire. Okay, and I understand that's not the point of this movie. It's supposed to make a bigger point about I don't know people getting along, and we can we're all the same kind of people deep down inside. And the bad people you think are bad aren't really bad, and the good people you think are good aren't really good. But the point is, you point a gun at me and my wife, and you're gonna get fucking wrecked. You're not gonna sit down and ask me where the wine opener is to open up a bottle of Pinot. I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm going to fucking jam it into the back of your throat. Do you understand what I'm talking about, Brenton? I understand. If I came in there, and, and you didn't know me, and I pointed a gun at you and your wife, you'd be completely cool with me hanging out for a day and a half and talking? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd show you my record collection, and we probably would bond and could watch Dude. football together. I thought this was going to turn into one of those cock movies where he starts to fight. I mean, that's really what it, I was like. There, at one point, it was Siegel and Lily Collins around a fire. And I'm like, they're going to fuck. And as soon as they do, I'm turning it off because I'm not watching the rest of it then. But they didn't. But it really had the vibe that they were going to. So, you know, it's a hit or miss. It's, uh, are you, it's, are you going to do any uh, Oscar picks? Are you going to put any money on Oscars? No, because I really don't know enough about it. I know much more about William Zalatoris and golf than I do about it. <laughs> I mean, I've seen like four of the pictures. I can tell you right now, give me the best documentary. Uh, give me the, the uh, titles and, and the theme of them, and I'll tell you which one's going to win. Okay. Do we have Nazis or do we have uh, trans or uh, people in like Darfur, horrible so... parts of Africa? These are the five documentaries uh, nominated for best feature. Uh, Writing with Fire. Give me the theme. What is it about? About uh, children who don't have computers in the inner city? I need to, <laughs> let's see. I need to they look have these to up use, individually. I <laughs> have uh, these sticks that they burn with fire to write see, with. Writing stuff with like Fire. That. <laughs> it's a comedy. I'm telling you. It's definitely not a comedy. Um, 
Uh, why is this so? Di- why can't they just have the description? In a cluttered news landscape dominated yep. by men, emerges India's only newspaper run by Dalit women. Perfect. Absolutely. It's an absolute contender. Sounds exactly the right vibe for the best documentary movie. Next one, please. Uh, it just booted me out. Hang on. This is so stupid. Dude. ABC needs to fix their site. You get, get on it, ABC. Uh, you heard our boy Brenton tell you. Yeah, fix it. Get that mouse and uh, start fixing the fucking... I'm talking about Disney, you know? Because Disney owns ABC. Mm-hmm. What's okay. the next documentary, uh, for God's sakes, Brenton? This it's is, called... I, I, I have a show tonight. It's called Ascension. Okay. Ascension. This is about people, uh, homeless people, getting through to the next level of their lives. Getting possible shelter am i correct uh an impressionistic exploration of the pursuit of wealth and the paradox of progress in the people's republic of china oh not that far off okay that's not gonna win so far the first one's more uh depressing okay our next one is called attica oh is that the one about yes i know that about the attic that's on hbo about the prisoners in Attica? Yeah. The five-day prison rebellion that yep. transpired in 1971. Okay. Uh, okay. Then we have Flea. All right. I, I heard of that one, but what that's about... Um, is that about bugs in the water and people don't have fresh drinking water? It tells the extraordinary true story of a man, Amin, on the verge of marriage, which compels him to reveal his hidden past for the first time. Okay. And is he our, a woman? I, I is he transgender? Know. Okay. <laughs> don't know. But the last one, our fifth and final, is Summer of Soul. It's uh, oh, that's about Quest Love presents a powerful and transporting documentary. <laughs> you have your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Summer of Soul will it's, win. It's uh, in this in this poll, it's eighty four percent picked to win. Yes. So the people agree with you. Summer of Soul will absolutely win about the uh, uh, black music groups that played in that, I guess, festival. It was a music festival or something like that. I haven't seen it yet, yeah. but Attica also, I, that's on my list to watch on HBO because I'm, I'm, I, like, I like prison shit. So, uh, but <laughs> if Summer of Soul wasn't in it, I bet you that that movie about the Indian uh, newspaper would have won. So, yeah. Uh, Summer of Souls absolutely going to win. Mark that shit down. In the books, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. 100%. Lock of the week. Anyone disagree? I don't disagree. Good. Um, who's hosting? Amy Schumer, right? <laughs> Isn't it, is it a lot of size, right? Or... I've heard it's three. I thought it's Amy Schumer. Uh, Wanda Sykes and uh, Regina Hall. Garage, Regina Hall. Okay. Yeah. Question: How? Yes. Like, what are the ratings on this going to be, though? I, I like because it's the just zero, worst, the worst of all time. Zero. No one's seen the movies. How zero. soon till they cancel the Oscars? Uh, this we it, probably they're the never going to commercial break. They're not going to cancel them. Who's going to win the last Oscar? They're never, they're Ever. never going to no, stop no, no. doing it. The no, egos never, are still yeah. there. They're going to continue to give away awards. awards out. Okay, yes. televising it though. Do you think this might be always? It. Someone will <laughs> televise it. They will have it on something. Someone so, is someone so, with high ties and a lot of money will put it on a streaming. It'll be like the Rock and Roll yes. thing. They'll put it on and, HBO. But it won't be live, dude. It won't be live. Yeah. It won't be a thing where you're watching it live. It's going to be like, here's a thing that we captured, even though yeah. you know who the winners are, like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's what it will be. And you'll watch, you'll watch it on Hulu or Netflix or one of the fucking places. And then, you know, it'll become less and less valuable. And, but it doesn't, you know, like, this is all based on the fact that the earth is going to basically implode upon itself in 50 years. So, you know, that, you know, the oceans will be on fire. So this is all like, like once that start, shit starts to happen, then people will probably start tuning in less and less to like the award shows. Yeah. That'll be the day. Like once the actual, you go to the beach and you look out and the oceans are just in flames. You're like, oh, I, I really don't care who's going to win the best actor tonight. 
Like that doesn't really well, register with me anymore. Speaking of the uh, world ending, I don't know if you guys saw it. Well, Steve, you didn't see it, but the Selective Service account, uh, the Independent Federal Agency of Our Nation's Best Insurance Policy, uh, they, they tweeted, in the event of a draft, this was unprovoked, in the event of a draft, our agency would partner with FEMA to provide opportunities to conscientious objectors. So they're talking about a draft two days what? ago. I think they tweeted this on Twitter. Yeah. They're, Not they're an NFL in draft? The, they're discussing <laughs> in the event of a draft for Human war, draft? Yes. All men 18 to 25 are eligible to be drafted. And in the event that you are a conscientious conscientious objector then you would go yeah. and work for fema instead of joining a military branch but they're, they're just tweeting about hey there might be a draft or if there is this is what's going to happen unprovoked so something's going on something bigger than all of us we are we went from a pandemic slid straight into world war three mm -hmm. and you're telling me right now a man with two sons who were not a closing, <laughs> approaching the age of a draft that I now, after I just fucking finally, all my possessions are in one house for the first time in 25 years that I now have to pick everybody up and get my ass to Canada ASAP. Yes. Because we're going to have a draft or, soon. Or you need to get them to join whatever religion doesn't believe in war and then they'll just go work for FEMA. So you might lose them to, uh, you know, no, the next na Catholic. natural disaster, but <gasps> they're, they're going to have to figure out how to not throw a punch. Otherwise, Dude, they're going to war. We're not going to war. Croatia, I mean, Croatia. Ukraine's got this <laughs> thing, dude. They have this. They've been dude, fighting back. I, They've every, been resisting. Every day I see a different fighter that's like, hey, I'm not going to fight in the UFC this summer because I'm going to fucking strangle some Russians on the side. So, like, they, they like, you got the Klitschko brothers. <laughs> Um, fucking Lomachenko. Who's getting through those guys? I think you, the Ukraine's going to be fine. We just have to keep propping them up, help supporting them, you know, with like the flags and shit like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't want to go to war with anyone. We don't. We can't afford a war. We're not. We're not in the space for war right now, dude. We're all tired. Nobody wants a war. So. And nobody wants bombs dropped on them. You want to start fucking nuclear bomb shit? Give me, they got to, they'll kill Putin before he drops a bomb. Um, but then again, I've been wrong before. How am I doing on Zalatoris? Jesus Christ. Uh, let's check. <laughs> segue. I have to, dude, this is a big parlay for me. Like the world is ending. How's my money? <laughs> well, I got to get as much as I can get going right now, dude. I, I didn't realize I was going to have to fucking. You don't I get to take it with you, Steve. You should just spend everything. Yeah, but you know once the draft thing gets out there, then the prices in Canada are going to start going up because I know the Americans are going to start coming over. Yeah. And so I got to beat that. I got to have as much Yeah, but as you I cover the – you don't pay for health care, so the cost balance is out. Is DraftKings legal in Canada? Can we look that up too? I, I to don't sure believe it is. All right, well, is then it? I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> Salator, is legal in Mexico? he's still up one through nine. According to refresh that shit, dude. What he drop dead? I, I, I just did. Let's see. Oh God, it's gonna be Ooh, bad. I know according it. to this, DraftKings is legal in Canada. I apologize. Yeah, you can you can bet. Yes. Hell fucking yeah. Uh, Ontario um, though, they don't have their gaming license yet. Their iGaming gaming license, so they're still waiting for that. According to this, I don't know if this is updated, but yeah, you could. Depending on where you are, you can place bets, but you can certainly at least participate in the fantasy sports. Um, did I tell you guys that I'm getting, like, I'm trying to get back into shape a little bit. I ran three miles a day, Monday, Tuesday. Wait, you and told Wednesday. us you ate 40,000 yeah. pounds of wings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was because <laughs> I ran three, nine miles so far this week. Okay. Plus, I'm going to go good. down and I'm, I'm going to go down and run a mile and a half after we're done with this fucking thing. So and get, and are, we, are, we doing the, shows. are we doing a half marathon again? No, I, gotta, I, I just started time? running, dude. I just started. Okay. You want to kill me? Okay. You want me to drop dead? <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, 
no, I do. I, my legs are sore as fuck, but they're not like, a, I'm not like a ache. I'm just like muscle sore. I'm not like knee sore, back sore. So it's good. I got to soak yeah. them. They got a hot tub down here. I'll fucking drop my ass in the hot tub, dude. I don't care if there's kids in there during the day. I've got a routine. <laughs> I don't care, dude. These fucking kids, if you let them, they will take over a hotel pool, indoor hotel pool. They'll run wild. And I don't mind. They want to run around the pool. The pool is a fuck. But the hot tub, that's adults, dude. Okay? <laughs> hot tubs for adults. Theoretically, you could bake a child inside of You could broil a child inside of a hot tub. They're not really supposed to be in there. So I go in the hot tub. You guys stay in the pool. And if you want to come in the hot tub, well, guess what? I still have to stretch and get my ass to one of those jets. So you move, move over, <laughs> Kyle. Um, so, yeah. So I've got a full... We got to wrap this thing up because I have to go down there a mile and a half, then hit the hot tub, then take a shit, shower, off to the show. So, you know, that's how it works today. Time to make the donuts. Um, do you guys have anything else you want to bitch about this week or no? Uh, well, the John Watson, I mean. He I, apparently doesn't think he knows it's serious, but he's like, and he trusts it's all. I love his. He's like, I trust all women. I was raised by women. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> essentially, these bitches be lying. <laughs> it's like, a, a, second, know, like, a second separate grand jury threw the case out. Hey, man. He just, and he's he saying went, now, I don't want to settle any of these civil lawsuits. I want to fight all of them and prove my innocence. So, yeah, he'll say I mean, you now. have two grand juries that have, <laughs> have thrown it out. At what point do we go, uh-oh? Maybe he wasn't actually guilty of what they're. I mean, maybe he was guilty of certain things, but maybe it wasn't Look, as bad. I'm not saying it exactly. one way or the other. I know he's probably know. still 22 women. He's probably guilty as fuck. But the fact that two grand juries have thrown it out, you got to go. Okay, we should maybe listen to him for a few minutes and see what he has to say. Um. Yeah, I mean, I the optics were bad. At least he's acknowledging it. A little bit where he's like, I understand it's 22 and that, you know, there are serious accusations, but I know that I'm innocent. So I have to defend myself. Um, at least he's not going like these bitches are lying or, you know, they're not telling the truth or whatever. Yeah. He's, he is, you know, acknowledging the seriousness of the situation. But you have to do that if you just got the richest contract in the history of the fucking sport you're playing. So you have to have some sort of culpability and be like, I got to take responsibility for some of this shit. Um, so we'll see, man. Look again, he goes out there and lights it up and start and goes on a run. That shit cures everything. Okay. Everything. Grand jury is coming back with nothing and a couple wins in the dog pound. Next thing you know, everyone's women will be rocking a Deshaun Watson. Oprah will have a Deshaun Watson fucking, uh, <laughs> Browns jersey. So. Apparently, Odell Beckham is interested in coming back to Cleveland to play with Watson. Well, everybody wants to come back now that you got a fucking guy to throw the ball to. Odell yeah. should be he's, – he's fine. He should stay in fucking L.A. He's an L.A. guy. He's weird. Yeah. They like weird out there. Just hang. Just want a Super Bowl. You know, relax. And plus, you tore your ACL. And people still are interested in you. So that's a good thing. Um, speaking of interested, I'm in Jacksonville. And if you're interested in seeing me next weekend – Jacksonville Comedy Zone, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. One show Thursday, two Friday, two Saturday. Tickets at SteveRenAzizi.com. You guys have any gigs uh, this week or next week coming up? I'm at the Improv tonight if this comes out before 10.30 Pacific time. Uh, it otherwise... won't. <laughs> it won't. That, that's not our fault, by the way. Yeah. That's no, not some our, of them are that's not. On, that's on the, some... uh, the, the Emma and Aaron team. They're okay, submitting no, everything I, we need look, to submit. Could, They're putting it out three we, days late. We couldn't do that. We couldn't do this without them. So I can't bitch. But yes, sometimes it is not our fault. Sometimes we do this Usually a little earlier. Is, and then, not, not this last one. Yes, not this last one. This one's not on us. But uh, yeah, it definitely isn't coming out tonight. So hopefully you have a great set tonight at the improv. That's why I'm not plugging my Buffalo shit this weekend. <laughs> I, I have a Zalatoris update. <laughs> All right, here we go. He is up one through 11. Oh, Come on God. now. Seven to go. Lot. All right, I gotta go. I gotta go down. I'm gonna watch him get that mile and a half in, and then I'm gonna shit in the hot tub, shower. <laughs> no, you're doing that out of oh, order. Shower, yeah. hot tub, shit, shower, show. There you go. 
Shit in the Hot Tub Shower Show. Got it. 10-4. Thank you, um, I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, telling other people. Thanks for letting us know how sloppy we are. We appreciate it. And uh, we will talk to you guys next week. Go Bills. Go Bills. <laughs>